Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 45th annual YWC Hamilton Women of Distinction nominee announcements presented by ArcelorMittal DeFasco. My name is Maddie Fuller and I'm a proud Hamilton community member and committee member for the YWCA Hamilton's Philanthropy Committee. And I also have the absolute pleasure and honor of an introducing to you live our nominees in the frontline worker category for our 2021 Courage of COVID special edition of the Women of Distinction Awards. This is our first of five nominee reveals that we will be, annou that we will be announcing and we'll be announcing our healthcare hero nominees tomorrow. So be sure to join us every day this week from one to 2 p.m. to celebrate our awesome 2021 nominees. We encourage you to use the chat function to cheer for your nominees and friends, and each of the reveals are being recorded and will be aired on Cable 14 and your TV Halton, and will be included on YWCA Hamilton's YouTube channel. And if you are following us online, please use hashtag WOD, Women of Distinction Hamilton Halton, um, or hashtag Courage of COVID, and please follow and like YWCA Hamilton on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Announcing our nominees is a milestone and celebration each year. And as we plan for our Reimagine YWCA Hamilton Women of Distinction Awards Gala on March 4th, and following our theme of the courage of COVID, we are not going to let a pandemic stop us from taking the time to profile this year's nominees. To share more with us about this unique category and the motivation behind its celebration is YWCA Hamilton CEO, Denise Kostrofferson. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, it's so wonderful to have your support for this year uh, to announce all of our nominees. And thank you to everyone watching right now, eager to meet our nominees. Folks, we have 97 uh, nominees this year. And you'll have a chance to meet these incredible women over the next week by turning in to our category on bailings. I also want to recognize the work of our y of YWCA Hamilton staff team and philanthropy committee for their resilience and perseverance this year in bringing this event to uh, our upcoming awards gala to life. Now, before we kick things off, I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land that I'm speaking from is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishwabe. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement and is directly adjacent to Haldeman Treaty territory. We respect the longstanding relationships with the local Indigenous communities, the Mississaugas of the First Credit First Nation and the Six Nations of the Grand River. YWCA Hamilton is dedicated to advancing opportunities for learning and education and is committed to the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner's Report. And I encourage each of you to recognize and acknowledge the land that you occupy, whatever, um, wh wherever you may be turning in, turning in, tuning in from. This year, our nominee reception looks a bit different um, than what you've been usually used to and you've seen in the past, but none less important. Sorry, folks, I'm just getting, um, I just need to do a double check here in terms of technology. Is I'm just, is my camera open now, folks? You look, you look and sound great, Denise. Okay, I just wanted to double check. Apparently I was covering the camera. Maybe even more important this year, as we know, almost a year into this virus, that the pandemic is having disproportionate effect on women. Across Canada, more women have died than men, and in part because women have been pushed to the front lines of the, pa of the pandemic response. In Canada, 56% of women workers are concentrated in occupations known as the five C's, caring, cashiering, catering, cleaning, and clerical functions. As a result, more women than men have had to risk their health and safety in order to continue working. As we work to rebuild a feminist uh, recovery plan to make the, the economy work for everyone, we know this year was a year to pay special tribute to those women who have made a real impact throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. This sparked the development of this year's special edition awards, 
categories, frontline worker, healthcare hero, pandemic innovator, community champion, and young trailblazer. And of course, we'll also feature our lifetime achievement category. These awards not only honor the strength and courage demonstrated by women in Hamilton, but we have now expanded our award program to acknowledge the incredible women in the Halton region. And today we get to meet the nominees who make up frontline work in the frontline worker category. This award honors the everyday sheroes who roll up their sleeves day in and day out to ensure all members of their community have what they need to stay safe. These are the women who have faced and continue to face COVID-19 pandemic head on through their work on the front lines as they are considered an essential worker. Our nominees range from working in the front lines in essential services, providing housing and shelter to educational settings, first response and service industries. These women have shown courage and leadership on the front lines and throughout their work, they promote the health and safety of their own team and members of the community. These women have been nominated because they have stood out and made a difference. To the nominators tuning in, thank you for taking the time to acknowledge the achievements and contributions of the honoree you have nominated. We appreciate you taking the time. I'm a little bit off script here, folks. We also know that it usually takes five or six times to convince a woman to be nominated. So thank you folks for put, allowing your names to be put forward. I would also like to thank our presenting sponsor, ArcelorMittal DeFasco. You have been by our side for years and have made your commitments to women and YWCA Hamilton loud and clear. Thank you for your ongoing support. Recognizing the diversity and strength of women in what Women of Distinction Award is what the Women of Distinction Awards is all about. To each of the nominees, your name joins the ranks of over 15 other 1500 other women, incredible women in our communities that have been acknowledged over the history of our events. Each of you is a proven leader and as a Women of Distinction nominee, you will serve as an inspiration for a new generation of women leaders. Thank you so much. You are now part of our legacy. Joining us today is Larissa Fenn with the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority, who has generously stepped up to be the official sponsor of our Frontline Worker Awards. Please join me in welcoming Larissa. Welcome, Larissa. Thank you, Denise. As Denise mentioned, I'm Larissa Fenn from the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority or HOPA Ports. This year, it was so important for us to sponsor this event for all of the reasons that Denise spoke about. On behalf of my colleagues at HOPA, it is our privilege to offer our most heartfelt salute to all of the nominees in this category. We're so proud to call you neighbors, colleagues, family, and friends. Your commitment, perseverance, and sacrifice keeps us safe. You're providing care when we require it and ensuring we all have the day-to-day -day essentials when we need them. We're marking a year since this all became real and we maybe we feel like it's all been said, but we think it is so important to say it again. Thank you. Today we'll be meeting with women nominated from both Hamilton and Halton, and I cannot wait, Maddie, Back to you with this year's nominees. Awesome, thank you so much, Larissa, and thank you for your support as well. And thank you for everyone for being so active in the chat already. Hopefully we can continue that as we announce our the names of our 2021 Frontline Worker nominees. And then we'll have some time to do a Q&A with each of them in kind of a casual uh, conversation setting to get to know everyone. I'm so excited and I hope everyone is ready as well. So our 12 Hamilton nominees for the Frontline Worker Award are Amanda Nagy, Angela Jaspin, Danielle Pento, Diana Abdul-Rahman, Elizabeth Kronk, 
Jacqueline Haynes, Naomi Henderson, Natalie Teal, Olivia Mancini, Rihanna Kruger, Sandy Green, who also is nominated for the Lifetime Achievement, Victoria Young, and in Halton, we have three nominees for this award, and they are Christina Mulder, Maha Tawadros, and Michelle Collins. So a huge congratulations to all of our nominees. And now I actually want to open up uh, the floor to all of our nominees, like I said, to get to know everyone. Um, this is obviously a little bit of a different year. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we are able to showcase all of our awesome nominees through conversation. And I, for one, love having these important conversations right now. So how I'm kind of going to frame this, I'm going to ask uh, some of our nominees certain questions. So four at a time, I'll ask each of you a certain question. And then if any of the other nominees want to jump in on that question, please feel free to unmute and uh, share some of your thoughts on it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where we go from there. So the first question that I wanted to ask to Amanda, Jacqueline, Natalie, and uh, De De Deanna is what has inspired you throughout this pandemic? Um, and I'm going to start with Amanda, if you don't mind. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for doing this. This is amazing. So thank you. Um, what has inspired me during the pandemic is the responsibility to my members, like coworkers, um, just being that leader in the, in the workplace, making sure like every question was answered, advocating for members, uh, and then also like the public safety because we work with the public and thousands of people go through our grocery stores every day and we just have to make sure that that is a health and safety standard is for everyone. So awesome. Those Thanks so much, Amanda. And Jacqueline? Yes, hi everyone. Um, I just uh, wanted to uh, talk about uh, what inspired me. And so I've been inspired trying to get WSIB coverage for res um, retirement home workers and developmental service workers for quite a few years. Um, but I have to say through the pandemic, it has really um, inspired me that much more. The fact that frontline workers are risking their lives every day at work and they don't have the government's back or the government doesn't have their back to provide them WSIB coverage. It's really unacceptable. Um, there are healthcare heroes risking their lives every single day on the front lines. And yet, you know, they have to go off, um, you know, getting COVID at work. And then they have to worry about whether they can pay their mortgage, put food on the table while they're self-isolating. So we continue to advocate to, through like for the government and continue to lobby them to get this, this made a reality for our frontline workers. Thank you, Jacqueline. Yes, that is so important. Thank you for doing that really important work where you saw a major gap for sure. So thank you. Uh, Natalie, what inspired you throughout this pandemic? Well, what's inspired me is witnessing the countless number of people that have uh, stepped up to help others in their communities. And um, also seeing some of the professions that are historically taken for granted um, are now being given the recognition that they definitely deserve. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie. That is, that's such a good point. I think we see that every single day. Thank you. And Diana, what has inspired you throughout this pandemic? Oh, okay. No worries. Does any does any of the other nominees want to jump in on that question of what has inspired you throughout this pandemic? I think it's such a great question to start off on. So anyone can jump in at this point. This is Rihanna. I'd like to go. Um, sorry, that'll work better. Um, <laughs> this is Rihanna. So um, I actually started a new job just two weeks or so before the pandemic really hit. And what really inspired me is coming in fresh into a new role, a new company, no one knew me, just the way the team rallied around me, um, supported me, trusted me that I knew what direction we had to take um, and helping me lead 400 plus people through 
something that was completely unknown. That that was really inspirational to know that people could look up to me and just trust enough to to do what the right thing was. Awesome. Thank you so much. And obviously, whoever nominated you saw that amazing leadership. So thank you for sharing that. Does anyone else want to jump in before we go to our next question? I don't mind. I'll, I'll tell you what inspired me. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot. And I think that uh, very early on in the community, we realized that the best way to tackle this, this battle, this war on our health and on our communities um, was to do it together. Uh, that was the one thing that, you know, it happened so quickly and effort, effortlessly. Um, women were leading all types of um, movements and gathering people together, working in hospitals, going into the community, just doing everything. And it just, it humbled me and it inspired me. Um, and as so many you mentioned at the beginning, um, women were um, affected negatively more than our male counterparts. So um, this whole recognition is, um, I don't know another word to say, but more so important. Um, and women also tend to carry on their shoulders more than one role. I mean, they care for their communities, they care for their families. And it was these, all these amazing women rallying together to get down to the business of saving lives. And, and that's what I was inspired by and continued to be inspired by. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. And just back to someone else's point, I think Natalie said this, of a lot of these frontline worker po job positions and roles in the community that were not acknowledged beforehand. And it really has brought the importance of that to the forefront. So thank you. Wonderful. So I want to move on to the next question. So what was your motivation to continue your work, advocacy, or contributions during the pandemic? Um, and I actually want to hand it off to Naomi. Hello. Um, so I have to say I've, uh, I've been very motivated by, first of all, the excellent community partners that I've had a chance to work with. Um, and everything that they've shown me that this community is capable of. But on top of that, I have to say I was really surprised by what was shown to be by my clients. So when this, when the pandemic first started, I was asking myself, what are we going to do for the homeless population? Because they're going to be ignored and they're going to feel invisible. And how are they going to survive in this? And so that's kind of what I uh, set out to do. During that, I have worked with some incredible partners but every time I speak with these different clients, I'm astounded by what they're capable of and how much they can survive, how much courage they have to do that. And the resilience that they've shown me has just been mind blowing, to be honest. So I'm motivated by them because if they can survive under these circumstances, then I can certainly put my time in to do what I can. Thank you so much, Naomi. That is such a great point of just identifying. There's so many, so many communities that are being impacted on a daily basis, especially, um, you know, homeless populations in Hamilton. So thank you for shedding some light on that. Wonderful. So Angela, what was your motivation to continue your work during the pandemic? Oh, you're on mute, Angela. <laughs> of my life. Um, so definitely the people that I work with, um, they, you know, we didn't know how everybody was going to tolerate the change and how it was going to affect people. And, you know, I work with people who are living alone, some people with their partners, and yet there was such a feeling of isolation um, and fear and so many uncertainties. And it you know, it took us, I think, about a year to get used to what was happening. And when I saw the need, um, you know, um, the people that I, I work with normally and just in general around mental health and promoting mental health has always been essential and more now than ever. So there was just no slowing down. There was just supporting people as best we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Angela. It was almost like there was no other choice but to continue on, to innovate, to, you know, keep on doing, doing the wonderful work you do. 
Awesome. Thank you. And Victoria, what was your motivation during the pandemic? Victoria? Okay, no worries. Um, I want to go on to another question as well about who nominated all of you wonderful people. So Danielle, could would you be able to share who nominated you and what does being nominated mean to you? Oh, okay. See, this is the one, this is kind of the beauty of some of these new categories coming up is that people need to just continue on and do the wonderful work they're doing. So this is, this is, I'm sad that Danielle's not here, but it's so amazing to see that, that, you know, life just has to keep on going on. I love that. Awesome. Well, I'm going to hand it off to Olivia then to answer that question of who nominated you and what does being nominated mean to you? Hi everyone, um, Lisa Bell nominated me. She's a community partner that works at Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness. Um, being nominated means to me, um, I was just really incredibly touched and humbled to be nominated and recognized for the important frontline work that I've been doing. And I just wanted to kind of thank Lisa for nominating me as well as those who wrote kind letters of support and as well to all the other fierce women that are working on the front lines with me. Awesome. Thanks Thank so you. much, Olivia. And congratulations again. Um, and Maha, who nominated you and what does nominated mean to you? Be what does being nominated mean to you? Hi, how are you, everyone? I'm so happy to be with you, everyone. And congratulations to you, too. And um, the one who nominated me was Corby. She was, she's working with me at the YMCA before and after school. And, and she's with me today, that's why I'm wearing mask. <laughs> and I'm so happy and, and she, she's um, surprised me. I don't know before. She just told me I did something to you and she was working on it before she, she told me. I have no idea about it, but she did. But I'm gonna show you guys her, she's here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hi. <laughs> yeah. This is Cardi. So I'm so happy to be a part with food, with you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maha. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. And um, Rih Rihanna, uh, who nominated you, and what does that mean to you? Well, I think it was a combination, two, three. So I work for Mondelez. We make candy for a living, which is pretty good if you can get it um and for me the nomination was um i think jointly between Natalie from our corporate team and also the hr team um very strongly represented by katie roberts who i see is on the call and um, some of the other hr team within my plant so um for me um, may, maybe a little bit of background first. So I'm plant manager at our Hamilton candy making facility. And it was just such an amazing honor to be recognized as a woman in a role that is predominantly male dominated. And um, for me, in my role, I've always had to compare myself against other men, how they were doing things, how they were performing in this role. Um, and quite honestly, Often I've suffered from imposter syndrome, trying to really figure out how, how I'm doing it and, you know, sort of how do I shape up to these men. So for me being nominated in this category and really, you know, being peers to so many other amazing women just really helps me crush that imposter syndrome to say that um, this, as women, we do amazing job. We do it very differently to men. and. Um, Honestly, there's, there's no need to step back. We should be celebrating the fact that we can do things differently and make a success of ourselves, no matter what, what it is that we um, attack, whatever we choose to do in life. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much. That is such a wonderful point about imposter syndrome, because back to what Denise said earlier, that sometimes it takes, you know, five time for a woman to, you know, get like get to this point as well to be nominated. And I feel like even if you do get to this position, sometimes I feel more so in women, it's easy to feel like, oh, this isn't a big deal. Oh, whatever. With that imposter syndrome coming in. But really everyone nominated in this category is really a testament to so many other women out there that might feel like they're not good enough or that their role that you know their role isn't good enough for this kind of thing when really it's the complete opposite so thank you for sharing and i might have to call you later to get some candy as well <laughs> awesome does anyone else want to give a shout out to their nominator feel free to unmute if you want to give a quick shout out to anyone I would like to as well. Go ahead, Naomi. Um, so believe it or not, being a paramedic is a, is a rather thankless job quite often. Um, we don't common, commonly get recognized for such things. So I want to say thank you to Sandra Kurziel, who is the coordinator of the Social Navigator program, who nominated me and the incredible letters of support that I received from others. That's awesome. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank my friend Lisa Smith who has been helping me with the advocacy of the mandatory WSA Mental Health Care Worker. She's uh, been very supportive through this whole process for a few years now. And I, I just wanted to give her thanks for all the support that she has given and all the letters that I received from my mind. Awesome, thanks, Sandy. I'd like to ditto that <laughs> um, with Lisa Smith. She's been uh, a fantastic supporter of us, following us on Facebook, following us on, uh, you know, all the um, progression we've made um, through the government. So um, I, I really, my heart goes out that she's uh, taken the time to really uh, acknowledge us. Thanks, Lisa. I'd like to say thank you quickly. Uh, I understand it to be a group effort um, spearheaded by one of my staff members named Sue. Um, but uh, knowing that it came from so many different levels, um, it, there aren't really many words. Um, I think you've all really said a lot of words that I wanted to say already, but uh, it has um, filled my cup for 2021. Actually probably filled a well worth uh, of water uh, to keep going. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that uh, took time. It was really impressive. Um, if that's the right word, I'm not sure when we got to review uh, our own nominations and letters of support that um, that was the best award I would have to thank you everyone. Thank you, Christina. I love when you said fill, like it filled your well for the rest of the year. I really, really like that. Thank you for sharing. I'd like to say thank you. <laughs> um, my understanding is that it, again, for me, it was a group effort and um, it's, I understand that it was uh, our general manager, uh, Jason Thorne from uh, Planning and Economic Development, um, uh, Ed Vanderwent, um, the director of the building division and uh, my uh, direct manager, John Lane, Director of Inspections. So was extremely honored and humbled by their nomination. And uh, yeah, that to me, I think I already won. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it means a lot for me. Um, 32 years with the building division and it means a lot. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. That's great. Uh, oh, I love how people are putting up their hands. <laughs> Angela, go ahead and then we'll go to Amanda. Um, so I have um, a bunch of women who support me and they've been doing this for years and years. And I have to say a shout out to the Canadian Mental Health Association, especially Rochelle. She's been my, uh, my friend, my confidant for so long. Uh, she works the streets with me. Um, we, we went throughout the whole pandemic, um, traveling, taking buses, going places, meeting with peers. Um, so she was one of the individuals that has nominated me um, alongside Jill Dennison. She has been also instrumental in my growth and understanding around mental health and, um, and spreading the word and through supporting because there's a whole educational piece and then there's a hands-on piece and both those two women have um, 
have shown me the way um, over the years. Uh, they're veterans at it. And um, as well as my team at St. Joe's Healthcare Hamilton, um, my manager, Fiona Wilson, she's, she um, stood by us and you know, said, if we're willing to go that extra mile, then, then that's fine. So she made it absolutely possible um, to make sure that no one got left behind and, and who we serve. So being nominated, uh, initially it floored me, it overwhelmed me and it humbled me. So I just wanna say thank you to those individuals and to the Y for making this happen. So thank you. Thank you, Angela. Amanda? Hi, I just wanted to thank my nominator as well. Her name is Deborah Jackson. She, uh, I got involved with her, well, I met her at a, fundraiser uh, and the NDP uh, in Niagara and then later on this year or I guess last year 2020 she came up with a project called uh, Women or Vision 2020 Women's Work which is an online uh, video chat and she asked me to take part in that and we got to know each other a little bit more through that and we just inspire each other and she's a really awesome person and I thank her for putting in the hard work of going through everything and, and filling out the application and really, you know, lifting other women up and making sure that we have voices to her to be heard because she's trying a new platform with YouTube. So check that out. It's Vision 2020 Women's Work at Niagara, at the Niagara Art Gallery. Awesome. Thank you. I like that shout out. Thank you. <laughs> Post that in the chat. Awesome. And I see Michelle has her hand up as well. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, so I want to shout out um, my nominee, um, my nominator, which is Rebecca Pallada. She's a young lady who I work with, um, who has just um, strives always to find moments to acknowledge women and the work that they do. I think we can all recognize that sometimes a woman's work is never done. Um, I hear it echoed in all of the sentiments uh, that have been spoken of already this afternoon and that we just do it without even thinking about it, without even looking for the accolades. Um, and it was such an honor to receive this nomination because it was definitely unexpected. Um, it was humbling and um, a little bit uncomfortable because you don't even think of it as um, something extra. It's just, you're just doing what needs to get done. So uh, to her and to everybody who took the time to write letters, um, it was, I think somebody else has said my well is full. Um, when I was feeling a little bit depleted at the end of 2020, when, you know, you're just tired, um, it was definitely a, a motivation booster. So congrats to all of you already as winners in my eye. That's amazing. Thank you, Michelle. And yes, everyone really is a winner. And I'm so glad that even just going through the nomination process and seeing, you know, all the wonderful things that people in your life have to say to you really makes you feel that you are a winner because it's so true. So thank you, Michelle, for sharing. Um, awesome. So Rihanna, did you, did you want to say something else as well? Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to, I guess, in a way, echo what, what some of the other ladies had already said, but just for me, it was such an inspiration reading through the feedback, the, the, the letters of recommendation, whatever we call it, that um, some people have put in. And it just, it really opened my eyes and I hope it opened everyone else's eyes as well in terms of just how you perceived and um, sometimes the things that we really do take for granted that we just think is the day job. Um, the impact that that has, especially I think on other women how, how we were able to inspire them and in, in turn as well to go on and do really great things. For me, that's, that's incredibly humbling, but it's also incredibly pow powerful and something to be truly proud of for all of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And I'm just seeing a comment in the chat that I want to read out loud for everyone, but can we, from Terry, can we please have this inspiring Zoom meeting every day? Such amazing support for the work of strong women. I totally agree. I might, uh, I mean, I'm here 
all for the rest of the week from one to two. So I guess I'm lucky in that sense. Um, but awesome. So I just wanted to go on to our last question as well of what has the COVID-19 pandemic taught you? Um, and I'm actually wanting to ask Sandy this question, Sandy, if you could unmute and just share a bit of what the pandemic has taught you so far. Um, well, this pandemic is, it has been very challenging as well. It's taught me resilience for sure. Um, the team of resilience and the people that I support has been a, a great honor. And knowing about all the wonderful support systems that are out there and, and learning, uh, and I don't think you realize how many support systems we really had until, until this happened. And I'm, I'm certainly thankful and grateful for all the support systems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. And I also want to hand it back over to Michelle, if you don't mind, if you could share with us what you learned from uh, COVID-19. Um, I think the biggest lesson for me was that it, we are, um, as Sandy said, more resilient and agile. Nobody could have ever imagined that the pandemic would have the impact on the world, on our communities as it, as it has. Um, but when you work together um, and there isn't a hierarchy because that, that's the one thing COVID taught us is that there is no hierarchy. It, in, it impacted everybody right from the top to the bottom. Um, but we are resilient. And when we work together and come together as a community, we are able to make such a huge difference. We have over 600 people that come through our building on a weekly basis. Um, who needs support in some form of it or another. And um, we didn't have a choice. Um, we had to keep our doors open and it didn't stop anybody. And they are looking to somebody such as women like yourselves to say, we can do it. Um, we are resilient. And so it was great that as a people, we can put our differences aside and come together for a common goal uh, and just continue to serve the people that need our help the most. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. And yeah, just like that strength piece that, you know, you, you hear people say as well, you know, it really shows how things can be so fragile, but I also think the strength coming from communities and from organizations and from individuals kind of overcomes that fragile idea that we've had, that we had at the beginning of this as well. So thank you for sharing. And lastly, I want to I want to ask Christina as well. What has COVID nineteen taught you? Thank you. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of life le lessons in 2020. Um, I'd have to say that I have a whole new level of patience um and understanding and i'm a mom of three so if that tells you anything um and one of the things that i thought was um that i was i, I learned and i thought was quite brilliant over last last year was that like i lead a team a staff team and a large contingent of volunteers um well over 150 active volunteers um and it taught me to be flexible, very, very flexible, and to also work with other agencies in a supportive role. Like we didn't have to be the leaders. Um, it was more effective um, for our community and our neighbors that we were the supporting agencies so that, you know, um, we worked with Burlington Food Bank um, and we supported them even though we have our own food bank, but we could be more impactful by joining forces with them. And it was okay that, you know, our name wasn't in the, in the headlines, if you will. Um, so that was, that was, um, that was a big lesson and um, we made some really wonderful connections uh, last year. So um, knowing that we can work together with other like-minded agencies and um, get the job done uh, um, in everyone's best interest, in our volunteers' best interest, in our staff's best interest, and obviously in our community's best interest. So um, that, that was the, the big, the patience, the flexibility, and it's okay to be a su the supporting role in mm -hmm in something as big as this. So. Mm -hmm. For sure, thank you. No, that is, those are such great lessons. I think all of us can relate to that for sure. So thank you.
Um, does anyone, I think we have time for maybe a couple, two, maybe one or two more comments if anyone else wants to share what they have learned over the past couple of months. I do. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Right. I'll just wait for the end to talk. <laughs> Um, I, I was really, I wanted to talk a little bit about your statement that you gave us all about the courage of COVID, because that kind of stumped me. I don't know if it stumped anybody else, but when looking at the questions, I was like, the, like I'm not courageous. What are you talking about? Like, um, and I look around this room and, and knowing some of the backgrounds of what you all do, and I think you are very courageous women. Um, so I, I really spent a lot of time on what is the, the courage of COVID um, especially as a woman. And I, I came up with kind of three things. Um, flexibility, that's, that came up again. But really, I guess we were courageous. If you think back to a year ago at this time, I was pretty terrified. I was pretty terrified of what the right decisions were and how my, deci my decisions were going to impact our community and our volunteers and how to keep them safe. And um, finding the willingness to bring my team with me through like through journeys that I had no idea where we were going to end up, but that we were going to do it together. I guess that's pretty courageous. Um, and so being willing to lead your team through something like that and the determination, um, which a lot of you mentioned um, as your motivation just to serve our community and the determination to like make sure that those people don't feel lost um, or or forgotten about and and human connection. So we might be giving food or clothing or a service, um, but really it's that human connection and making sure that that piece is not missed. And um, as you know, distance as it might have had to have been and masked and and safe, it's still a really really important piece. So willingness, determination, and um, the flexibility, I believe, are the courage, uh, the, what being uh, courageous in COVID has meant the most to me. Thank you so much. I, I think we often have like that definition of like courageous is something different than what we actually do in an everyday, <laughs> in everyday sense. And we kind of think it's something that you, you know, you see in the movies or you see always like, uh, you know, covered in the news or whatever, but it's exactly what you just said. I love that. Does anybody else want to share? I'm just looking in all of my little like video boxes to see. Elizabeth, do you did you want to share some, anything, you know, what you learned from the COVID-19 pandemic or anything like that? Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, I tried to raise my hand before, but I, I think my my button bottoms of buttons on bottom are not working. But uh, two things I'd like to say. Um, one is uh, when I first was nominated, I just, uh, I didn't really look at myself that way. Um, Michelle Scott nominated me and uh, Michelle Simonovich uh, sent in a letter. Uh, just very overwhelmed. I don't think we look at uh, the work we do. I know everyone was saying that, um, uh, you know, we just do the work. We don't really think of what we're doing. But with outreach, uh, we never really get recognized. Same as Naomi, we work together. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just nice to be thought of that way. Um, a little bit of, uh, hey, you know, good work. Um, yeah, been doing this for a long time. So <laughs> I'm just really happy about it. But uh, yeah, I think, and the other part is just the motivation piece. And um, I, I know some of you were saying uh, what motivated you. Um, for me, it was just the people, like the people out on the street that didn't have access to food, didn't have access to any type of shelter, who were sleeping outside, um, healthcare. Like, um, I think we just wanted to be that uh, that attachment to, you know, the necessities in life. So we'd bring out, you know, doctors. We'd bring out food. We'd bring out clothing. Uh, try to find places. We didn't even have washrooms in the beginning of the pandemic. For people to use. Um, I think we just wanted to give them some hope, a little bit of hope to say, you know, somebody's here, somebody's thinking about you, um, that we're here. So yeah, uh, and congratulations to all the women. I know a lot of you um, and uh, yeah, good work. Okay, that's my say. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you, Elizabeth. I really, really appreciate it. And again, just bringing that perspective of 
of, you know, your experience working on the front lines with, with people who, you know, like you said at the beginning, didn't even have access to a washroom and things that we take so for granted for. So thank you so much for shedding a light on that. Um, and with that all being said, again, thank you so much for everyone for contributing to this conversation. I'm not going to lie. I, when I was coming into this, I didn't know the first day of the reveals. I'm like, I don't know what the, what this is going to be like, but all of you made this so wonderful and really eye-opening for me. And I know for a lot of other people tuning in right now. So thank you so much for starting off our nominee reveals on such a strong high note. Um, um, and thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. And again, congratulations to all of our frontline worker nominees. Best of luck to you all. Um, but as we are all saying in the chat and all the responses, you're all winners already. Um, and if you want to be a part of the award ceremony to see who will be named the Courage of COVID frontline worker for this year's Women of Distinction, then please join us and host Tara Lightfoot on March 4th. Tickets are now on sale at ywcahamilton.org. And this year's Reimagine event includes dinner from your choice of one of YWCA's local restaurant partners, including Rasp Rapscallion, YWCA's At the Table Cafe and Catering, Carmen's on, the, Carmen's on the Mountain, which are all in Hamilton, along with the Edge Hospitality and Stoop Bakers in Halton. Ticket purchasers will receive a special mystery gift box featuring the best of Hamilton and Halton, compliments of the YWCA and our partners. And your ticket will give you access to watch the real time the real time award ceremony in a viewing room with friends, family, and colleagues. Technology is a beautiful time to bring us together while staying safely apart. YWCA also has an out of town ticket option this year, which folks can purchase to tune in live to cheer for our nominees wherever you may be. We also have an amazing lineup of silent auction items going live on March 15th and a great contest already open and selling. Contest tickets are only $10 and you'll have a chance to win our grand prize of $1,000 cash or one of three awesome prize packs. I heard they're pretty awesome. So um, proceeds from the Women of Distinction Award powers the critical programs and services offered by y YWC Hamilton, making sure that every woman and her family has the tools and resources needed to rebuild their lives. And I have to say, Big, also big shout out to the YWCA Hamilton team for creating such an amazing event, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of it being on Zoom or any of the other other of the circumstances. Um, it's going to be such a great event. And don't forget to join us tomorrow when we announce the nominees in our healthcare heroes category. So if you want to hear a similar kind of conversation and feel great for the rest of your after afternoon, we'll be here again from 1 to 2 p.m. So please help spread the word. And thanks again, everyone, and a big congratulations for to our nominees uh, for tuning in today. And we'll see you tomorrow if you're tuning in. Bye, everyone. <laughs>